This is the play I was telling you about, when we found Ginger. It's all red. Yeah, it was really terrific. It had three sons and the greatest insects you ever saw. Dale of only likes places that have creepy, crawly things on them. And Tim only likes places where they're teenage boys. Mom! You should have seen her when we tuned into television on this planet. She almost went crazy. She's still trying to figure out a way she can beat John Travolta and Sean Cassidy. You little ghoul of Thornton. She called me a ghoul of Thornton. I've been trying to go to sleep, but Dale won't turn that thing off. Now, Dale, I told you to turn this off a long time ago. Come on, it is time to go to sleep. We all have to get a good night's rest if we're going to be able to repair the ship. I thought you were older than that. Good night. Good night, Tommy. Good night. Tommy, none of your shenanigans now. Yes, sir. Who's Ellen? My daughter-in-law, Tommy's mother. She's been gone a year now. For a moment, you reminded me of her, the way you were tucking the children. Mind if I ask you a question? Of course. You knew I was thinking of someone named Ellen. Just how much of my mind can you read? Mostly we sense emotions. Love, anger, and, and in your case, trust. It's a very handy ability. Handy if you're a woman. If you're a man, it can be quite maddening. You mean your men can't do it? Well, it seems some things are universal. Most men down here are certain that women know what they're thinking. Find what you need? Nope. <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting that we can do some things that you can't. It must be rather upside down to you. Honey, I think the word is upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Now, that's the metal we need to obtain. At home, we call it slorian ore. I don't know what you call it here on this planet. It's interesting. It feels kind of oily. Well, that oily quality is what makes it unique. Its heat resistance is ten times greater than any metal in the galaxy. That's the problem. We have to find some here. Well, unless you're fighting time. I don't see any problem. You are fighting time. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You see, there are things in space, for lack of a better word. We call them windows. They allow us to travel from one star system to another. We were nearing the window we needed to return home when we ran into a cosmic storm, which, well, it damaged our guidance system. And the window that we need to leave your star system is going to close soon. And if we ever want to see our home again, we have to leave your planet within 60 hours from the time we landed. That gives you less than two and a half days. Not much time. Do you think maybe we should contact some of your Earth authorities? Oh, under the circumstances, it might not be the wisest thing to do. See, if you call in the authorities, I'm afraid it might take a lot longer than two and a half days to convince them that, that, that you didn't mean any harm, you see. You're thinking that they might never let us leave. What would you suggest? Well, what you need is information. Now, Tommy and I are heading back for the city in the morning. It's just three hours from here, and uh, we'd like to have you come along. We could put you up, we've got plenty of room, show you a little of our world. And the most important for you, the university with its libraries is just a couple of blocks away from our hotel. Do you think this university has the information we need? It might. Well, I hate to get further and further away from the ship, but we have to do something. Look, we'd be horrified to join you. 
honored, honey. <laughs> he means honored. Yeah, that too. <laughs> All right, well, that's very good news. 10-4. Conrad? Excuse me, I just thought you'd like to know. All roads are now officially barricaded. No one's going to be able to get out without us knowing about it. Excellent. insurance salesmen? They're called elk. You find them all over in these parts. They're animals. Insurance salesmen have to be people. Uh-oh. What is it? Trouble, I'm afraid. If I'm not mistaken, they're looking for you. Well, maybe you should just turn around and go the other way. I'm afraid right now it'd be like waving a red flag in front of a bull. But what are we going to do? The only thing we can do is put on a poker face, smile, and just bluff our way through. Quick, close the blinds. Morning, sir. Good morning. Morning. What's all this? Well, it has to do with that UFO we spotted last night. That fellow over there by Deputy Sweeney Space agency sent him down here. His name is Conrad. I had to set up roadblocks for a 50 mile radius. Well, what you looking for? Strangers. If you know what I mean. Oh, does that mean that you found the UFO? Well, not yet. But we've got over 300 men out looking for it now. We'll find it. Well, uh, good luck to you, Sheriff. I'm on my way down to the city, and if I see anything suspicious, I'll give you a call on the CB. I'm supposed to search all vehicles, Mr. Anderson. But I guess you're okay. All right, man, you can let this one go through. Just a minute. Well, I can vouch for Mr. Anderson. I'm sure you can, Sheriff. But my orders are to search all vehicles. That's right, that's what his orders are. Come with me. My pet monkey, he spilled a can of green paint all over him. You can drive on. That's funny. I never knew Tommy had a green monkey. <laughs> That's neat. Next car. It's a matter of locking electrical body forces. Usually you have a partner you're touching. You concentrate and hold your breath all at the same time. Back home is where we used to play hide and go seek. <laughs> I'll show you how to use the telephone, just in case you need it later. You can see just about everything from here. Oh, 
Aren't they cute? They sure are. What are they called? Doves. Come on, I won't hurt you. You and your creepy crawly thing. That's all there is to it. Mr. Wright? I've been looking for you for hours. Boy, good thing I saw you drive around front. Oh, we have trouble. Slow down, Willie. Slow down. What's your problem? Well, uh, everything, sir. I mean, not everything, but uh, uh, the big freezer's on the blank, and uh, the laundry misplaced 300 tablecloths. Well, where are the blazers at Billings? Well, that's just it, sir. He quit this morning. He quit? The manager of a hotel doesn't quit the day before a stockholders meeting. You think Madden had anything to do with this? Rumor has it, sir, that Madden gave Billings a job in a big hotel in Hawaii and money to get there on. Well, it looks as if I've come back to a hornet's nest so I must excuse myself for a little while. Willie, these are the people who I reserved the suite for, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Robinson. This is my bell captain and friend, Willie. Ah, uh, now, it's Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, Robinson as in Swiss family. Oh, <laughs> Swiss family. <laughs> They're from Kansas City. <laughs> well, Kansas City, well, that's where you're from, isn't it, Bob? Yeah. Well, listen, it's just a little tiny world. <laughs> that <Certainly> is. <laughs> uh, Willie, I'd appreciate it. Now, if you'd go back to the front desk and check them in, all right? Oh, yes, sir. Nice to meet you folks. Bye. Something wrong, Grandpa? Yeah, it's Madden, but don't worry about that. I'll take care of him. Now, meanwhile, I want you to fill in for me around here. Now, when the is ready, I want you to take him over to the science library at the university, okay? Hey, can I go too? Tommy promised me he'd show me around and introduce me to some of his friends. That's a good idea. If we're gonna make the most of our stay here, we should mingle with Earth children of their age. Yeah, that's fine for Dalen. He's got Tommy, but what about Teva? Oh, I could just go to the swimming pool or something. Why is it I feel there's more than meets the ear here? You know, I have an idea. Willie has a sister who spends quite a lot of time at the pool. She's about Teva's age. And I believe her favorite subject is, uh, boys, too. Oh, no! Don't worry. Wow, how did you do that? Halfway as usual. What's that supposed to mean? Well, just that you forgot that. Girls. <laughs> all is that all the time you're in space you don't have to go to school. I wish. You mean you do have to go to school? Well, besides being scientists, both my parents are teachers. What do your folks do? My dad used to help my grandpa run the hotel. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, what does he do now? My mom and dad died in a car crash a year ago yesterday. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. People die all the time. And you can't bring them back by being sorry.
But I know he was sorry. I could feel it. He wanted to cry. Yeah. But why did he say that? Sometimes some things hurt so much. It's hard to admit they're there. Come on, Dave. library over there. You know, Tommy, when I was a boy about your age, my dad was killed in a space shuttle accident. It's the worst feeling I ever had. A shot put. You never played this at home. I and mean, what happens if he's trying to catch you some miss? Um, can I try that? Sure. Sure. It must have something to do with the difference in the gravity. Hey, you! Come here. Listen now. This is where we split up. You guys be careful now. See you back at the hotel. Go right, on. Right, let's go. Hey, wait, hey! Come back! Hey, come back! Come back, please! Hey, you! Coach! Hey, Coach Conway! I just solved all our shot putting problems. What are you talking about? Our kid just threw the shot put to the field all the way to the tennis court. No, it's the truth, really. I'll take you out there to show you where it landed. All the way to the tennis courts? All the way to the tennis courts. That would shatter the world record. And this kid, where is he? Well, that's a bad part. He, he ran away. He what? Well, we've got to find him. What did he look like? Well, uh, no problem there, Coach. I know exactly what he looks like. I could pick him out of a thousand. He has brown hair, about 90 pounds, five feet tall, and I would guess about 11 years old. About 11 years old. Oh, give or take a year, he could be 12. Or maybe just a big 10. Just a big 10? All the way to the tennis courts? Sterling, do me a favor. Yes, Coach. For the rest of the day, do your best to stay out of the sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Anderson's place without even telling him. We've searched every other cabin on this bridge, and we're going to search this one. Mr. Conrad. Something in this little one. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. About as much sense as a green monkey. captain of my sixth grade team, and last week we beat his team for the park championship. 
We want to play for the championship again. Terrific. Come around next year. We'll see if we can fit you in. We want to play now, Anderson, and not for any lousy trophies. They want to play for our bikes. Our bikes? You heard him. All the bikes your team owns against all the bikes we own. But that's crazy. We killed you last week. It was a fluke. Fluke? We beat you by 22 points. What do you say, Anderson? You playing or are you chicken? Never say all day we ain't got the guts to play. But our bikes, there's something fishy here. Gotta play him, Tommy. Can't let him call us chicken. they were setting this up. It's the Goon Twins. Hey, but that's not fair. They're in the eighth grade. Wrong, smart guy. They were in the eighth grade until last week when they were both flunked down to the sixth. But those guys are animals. Man, I got a feeling they're animals who could ride bikes. probably help. Forty more seconds, Anderson, and we got ourselves some nice new bikes. Thank you. 